So there's a lot of hype over the new GPUs that are coming out, but I actually think if you're looking for a GPU or a PC now, one graphics card in particular from the previous gen is a little bit more exciting. The 7800 XT. With supply so limited for the newly released GPUs and MSRP completely out of sync with real world prices, even the GPUs that seem more value orientated at release, the value proposition can really change when you actually buy these GPUs or computers with these cards in the real world. So with that in mind, the 7800 XT has arguably become the best value graphics card currently out there. The price for this card is extremely good and it can play pretty much anything at 1440p with high FPS and even offers 4K gaming prowess. And that's what we'll be showing today. We'll be testing the RX 7800 XT against its bigger brother, the 9070, and the existing Nvidia counterparts, the current gen 5070 and the previous gen 4070. We'll be looking at the performance of this card and the real measure of its value, the cost of each graphics card per frame across the US, Europe, UK, and of course, Australia. Okay, first some basic assumptions in terms of card pricing. So obviously MSRP is one thing, but in this messed up world, no one is really seeing these prices reflected. So based on prices I'm seeing at the retailers, we have the 7800 XT in the US market at $480, the RTX 4070 at 545, the 9070 for 670, and the 5070 for 660. In the Australian market, the 7800 XT is at 790 AUD, the RTX 4070 at 950 AUD, and the 9070 for 1150 AUD, and the 5070 for 1200. In the UK market, we have the 7800 XT at 480 pounds, the 4070 at 530 pounds, the 9070 at 600 pounds, and the 5070 at 580 pounds. And in the European market, we have the 7800 XT at 490 euros, the RTX 4070 at 570 euros, the 9070 for 700 euros, and the 5070 for 680 euros. Now, I don't want to take away from the enormous power of the new GPUs. From the 50 series or the RX 9000 series, it's crazy to see games running 4K max graphics with ray tracing enabled and doing so with comfortable FPS. But the the other thing to consider is how many of you are actually playing on a 4K monitor or with monitors that have over 144 Hz refresh rate and you're playing completely maxed out in terms of graphics settings where you can actually notice the performance difference. And with the market so messed up with supply and pricing and most of us being mere mortals in terms of what we can afford, we have to consider the real world value proposition when we are deciding what GPU to have in our gaming PC. I'm just saying that for most people's rigs and for most of the games that people play, the 7800 XT is looking really good, especially for the kind of money you can get this GPU for or for rigs with this GPU. Now let's take this card and test it out against its competitors. The five games we tested were Marvel Rivals, Cyberpunk, GTA 5 Enhanced, Delta Force and Warzone. This gives us a good balance between single player and multiplayer games. Alright, before I go through the details with performance and cost per frame for each GPU in each region, let's take a look at the averages. I've got the timestamps for the different regions and games, so feel free to skip forward to see what applies to you. But here's the broad averages. Averaged out across the five games, the 7800 XT ranked third in terms of FPS output with 92.2. The top was the 9070 with an average of 111.4. Number two was the 5070 with an average of 104.8. And taking up the rear was the 4070 with an average of 88.2. Now taking those averages against their price, in the US market, we can see that the RX 7800 XT is about a dollar cheaper per frame than the others with a cost per frame of 5.2. In the Australian market, this gap is much wider. The RX 7800 XT has a cost per frame of 8.6, where the rest of the graphics cards are all in double digits. In the UK market, the numbers are much flatter. However, the RX 7800 XT comes out as the best value again, with a cost per frame of 5.2. And finally, in the European market, the 7800 XT is about a euro cheaper than the rest. In percentage terms, you're saving about 15% per frame by going with this GPU. Okay, now for the specific games in the specific regions. Once again, please feel free to skip forward to the region that applies to you. Starting with Marvel Rivals, settings were at 1440p Ultra on native, so no AI frame gen, which is more realistic for a competitive shooter like this when we're trying to minimize input lag. The RX 7800 XT averaged 67 FPS, nearly the same as the 68 for the 4070. Topping the results was the 5070 averaging 78, but the 9070 was nearly identical with 77. Now this means in the US market, the 7800 XT was the best value with an average cost of $7.2 per frame, and trailing with the worst was the RX 9070. In the Australian market, the RX 7800 XT remains the best value, with an average cost of 11 the worst was the 5070 with a cost of 15.4 per frame. In the British market, it was much closer, but the 7800 XT was the best value with a CPF of 7.2. The 4070 and 9070 tied as
is the worst value at 7.8. In Europe, the 7800 XT continued its clean sweep with a cost per frame of 7.3 and the worst value was the 9070 at 9.1. Now onto Cyberpunk at 1440p ultra settings. The 9070 had the best result with an average of 113. Number two was the 5070 with 98, the 7800 XT managed 92, and the 4070 averaged 81. This means in the US market, the 7800 XT was the best value with a cost per frame of 5.2, the 5070 and 4070 tied for the worst value with a figure of 6.7 respectively. In Australia, the 7800 XT was by far the best value with an average of 8.6. None of the other GPUs were even close really. The closest was the 9070, but that was $1.60 more per frame. And the 5070, which was the worst value, was a whole $3.60 more per frame. In Britain, the 7800 XT only just pips it for best value, coming at just 10 pence cheaper than the RX 9070. But it was still 1.3 cheaper than its generational counterpart, the 4070. Finally, in Europe, the 7800 XT was the best value at 5.3 euros per frame. And the worst was the 4070 at 7. Now for the newly refreshed title, GTA 5 Enhance. I tested this out at 1440p maximum quality with ray tracing. This game definitely favored the Nvidia GPUs. The strongest performer was the 5070 with 102, the 9070 averaged 10 less with 92, and the 4070 beat the 7800 XT by 12 with an average of 74 compared to 62. This performance led to some value difference compared to the other titles, but it was quite different depending on the market. In terms of cost per frame for the US, the 5070 was the best value with 6.5, while the worst actually was the 7800 XT with 7.7. This was nearly repeated in Australia. The best value was the 5070 with an average of 11.8, but the 4070 was just the worst value by 10 cents more than the 7800 XT at 12.8. In Britain, once again, the 5070 was the best value at 5.7. The worst value once again was the 4070. Finally, in Europe, the 7800 XT was the worst value at 7.9 euros per frame. The 9070 and 4070 were very similar, and once again, the 5070 was the best value at 6.7. Now onto Delta Force. If you were a fan of Battlefield, I would definitely recommend this game. But anyway, this was at 1440p ultra quality. The 5070 had the best average at 140, the 9070 followed with 125, the 7800 XT averaged 105, and the 4070 did surprisingly well with an average of 120 FPS. This means in the US market, the 4070 was the best value, but only by 10 cents over the 7800 XT with a cost per frame of 4.5. However, in Australia, the 7800 XT still came out as the best value with a cost per frame of 7.5, and the worst value was the 9070 with 9.2. In Britain, the numbers were quite even, but the 5070 one out with a cost per frame of 4.1. Finally, in Europe, the 7800 XT came out as the best value, but only marginally, beating the 4070 and 5070 by 10 and 20 cents respectively, with a figure of 4.7. Now for the final title, Warzone. This game, as has happened for a long time, heavily favored the AMD GPUs. In terms of raw performance, a 1440p extreme quality, the 9070 topped out with an average of 150 FPS. Number two was the 7800 XT, averaging 135. The 5070 and 4070 fell a bit below, averaging 106 and 98. This meant in the US market, the 7800 XT offered nearly 50% better value than the NVIDIA options, with a cost per frame of 3.6. The worst value was the 5070 at 6.2. In Australia, the difference was vast. The 7800 XT got $5.9 per frame. The 9070 got the closest with 7.6, and once again, the 5070 was the worst value at 11.3. In the United Kingdom, we saw closer results, as we've seen most of the time in this region, but the 7800 XT was still the best value at £3.60 per frame. Finally, in Europe, the 7800 XT was the best value with the same figure of 3.6, but the margin was greater, nearly 50% better value than the 5070 for Warzone. And that's it for all the numbers. Honestly, I think it shows the value proposition for the 7800 XT, especially if you're based in the US, Europe, and Australia. It's a bit closer in the UK, but still in my view, the 7800 XT offers the best value. We've got some great prices on pre-built PCs with this GPU, and we have the 7800 XT on special in our custom PC builder. So if you're looking to get a hold of a PC with this GPU, and you're based in Australia or the US, check out the links below. But that's it for the video. Thanks so much for watching and I'll hopefully see you in the next one.